Hello, today we will focus on smooth curves. The goal of this lesson is to understand the formula for length that is valid when a curve is smooth. When we have a curve, its derivative is defined in the same way as the derivative of a usual function. We take the Newton quotient and let h go to zero. What one gets in the limit, provided it exists, is an arrow that points in the direction in which the particle is moving at time t. The length of this arrow is proportional to how fast is such particle moving at time t. This is why we call this derivative the velocity of the trajectory gamma. One thing we should notice is that if one takes different parametrizations of the same curve, this derivative vector does not have to be the same. Imagine two distinct cars traveling along the same road. There is no reason for their velocities to be the same. However, one can easily obtain a relationship between these two velocities by applying the chain rule. If we take two parametrizations, gamma1 and gamma2, with gamma2 equals to gamma1 composed with phi, then the velocity vector of gamma2 is going to be the velocity of gamma1 at the corresponding point, rescaled by the derivative of the function phi. The very important formula that I mentioned at the beginning of the lesson is the following. If one has a C1 curve gamma, then one can compute its length by integrating the length of its velocity, also known as speed, from the initial time to the final time. Before we proceed to prove this formula, I suggest that we use the chain rule that we just discussed to show that the right-hand side of the equation is independent of the parametrization. We can write the integral with respect to the parametrization gamma 2. By our chain rule, the length of gamma 2 prime is the length of gamma 1 prime times phi prime. Now this integral is gelling to us to a change of variable. We put u equals phi of t, which gives du is phi prime of t dt. We substitute this back on the integral and get the right hand side of the equation, but now with respect to the parametrization gamma 1. Now let's jump right into the proof. The first step will be to show that the right-hand side is always at least as large as the distance between the endpoints of the curve. To do that, one must first consider the scalar function eta given by gamma of t minus gamma of a dot gamma of b minus gamma of a. This may seem like a weird choice at first, but after we take its derivative and apply the cauchy shorts inequality, one obtains the desired equation by integrating. So again, what happens? We take derivative, then Cauchy-Schwartz, then we integrate. On one hand, et of a is zero, and et of b is gamma of b minus gamma of a squared. On the other hand, the integral of eta prime is less or equal than the length of gamma b minus gamma a times the integral of gamma prime. After canceling the length of gamma b minus gamma a, this is exactly what we wanted. Now, what happens when we take an arbitrary partition? This partition breaks the integral into finitely many pieces, which by step one are larger than the distance between the consecutive points in the partition. Since the partition is arbitrary, one can conclude that the integral is larger than the length of the curve. Now, for the other inequality, for each epsilon, we first construct a partition that breaks the curve in two parts. In one part, the velocity is less than epsilon over b minus a. On the other part, the velocity is always at least epsilon over 2 b minus a. This divides the domain of the curve into the portion when the particle goes very slow and the portion where the particle never goes too slow. The integral over the intervals of the first kind is at most epsilon, so we can focus on the intervals of the second kind. I will leave this part to you in the following exercise. Imagine that we have a curve alpha that never goes close to the origin, and it doesn't move too much. Then one can bound the integral of its length by the length of its integral. Applying this exercise to the velocity vector, then show that this formula holds along the intervals where the curve never goes too slow. So now we have this nice formula for the length of a smooth curve. With this, one can show that a C1 curve is a parametrization by arc length if and only if the speed is 1 at all times. 
Also, as a second corollary, one gets that the arc length parameterization for a smooth regular curve is smooth. I again leave to you proving these corollaries using the length formula we just proved. A last exercise for you today is to show that this curve I mentioned last lesson is not smooth regular. This curve consists of a straight line going from minus 2, 0 to minus 1, 1, followed by a piece of circle from minus 1, 1 to 1, 1, and then another straight segment from 1, 1 to 2, 0. If this curve was smooth regular, its arc length parameterization would be smooth. However, you can compute the derivative of the arc length parameterization and show that it is not smooth. Good luck and see you next time.